can y'all let me know if the internet's working out here? I'm sitting outside of my in-laws um, house and I don't know if the internet's working good out here. Um, hi. Okay, as you're joining in, can you let me know, is it working? You can hear, see, it's working. Okay, good, awesome. Um, well, thank y'all for hopping on really quick. We're outside again. We were out here two days ago and it was the, the garbage man came. And so I'm sitting outside and it could be loud. Um, I don't really know what could happen. Somebody could pull up or something. Um, Jonathan, I see Jonathan's joining in and he's with my husband right now. So, hey guys, if y'all are watching me right now. Um, and I see my mom. So while you're joining in, just say your name and where you are um, at. Okay, did y'all lose me? Let me know. Y'all can just kind of let me know if um, if you can see me or not. I'm going to stay in the same place just to make sure that this works. Um, Greg is coming to work for me. <laughs> um, all right, guys. Are y'all joining in? Okay, you are good. All right, well, you know what? I'm just going to go for it right now. We're just going to go ahead and, um, and stick with it. Let's see. We're just going to keep going. And we're going to see if the internet connection works. And, um, and if not, then you can watch the replay later. But I just wanted to hop on and talk about Proverbs 31, 24. Um, so I'm Gretchen Saffles. If you're just joining in for the first time, I'm currently in Nebraska visiting my husband's family. Normally we are in Knoxville, Tennessee. So, um, I've just been trying to do these periscopes kind of where, um, where I am. And so last week I was in Georgia. This week I am in, um, me block that person. Okay. Um, this week I'm in Nebraska and, um, I'm really thankful that y'all are just so patient and willing to do these at random times. So, um, since we're doing this later, we may have some people popping in that say some inappropriate things. And, um, I've said this before, but if that happens, I'll try to block them. And, um, if I miss them, you know, we'll just keep going and just trust that God will still use it for his glory. And, um, and you can also block them or you can kind of hide their comments. That way you, um, don't get super distracted as well. So we're just going to keep going for it. But today, before we, um, oh, you were in Knoxville and thought of me. I wish that I had, that I'd been there. That's so fun. Um, today, before we start, I just want to ask y'all, first of all, how you're doing today. Um, it's Thursday afternoon, and first of all, I just want to tell you, I'm really, really tired. We are, when we travel, our baby hasn't been sleeping as good, and, um, so I'm just so tired, but I'm thankful for God's grace in it all. I'm really thankful, um, just that His Word is true, and I just wanted to sort of ask y'all that. And let me see if I can block these. Okay. Um, I just want to ask y'all that before we started going, how you're doing today? How is your heart doing? Um, I think sometimes it's, it's hard for us to answer that question just in the middle of the week, whenever we're busy with children and things to do. And, um, and it can be, it can be hard whenever our hearts are heavy, whenever we are tired and weary and, um, emotional and insecure. Shea, is, I think that's Shea or Shay. That's really good. Um, you're grateful. Your heart feels good. A long day. Um, so I just, I wanted to ask all that question. Hard day with attacks from the enemy on your daughter. Um, you know, I just feel like sometimes we just have to say what's heavy on our hearts. Um, we just have to let it out because I know that sometimes I can keep going and, and it kind of gets all bottled up on the inside and the Lord knows, and he's so faithful. And so I wanted to just start today by asking y'all that question, um, because I felt like I probably wasn't the only person who's tired and exhausted today, who, um, has felt really distracted. And so I wanted to ask y'all that question. Um, first of all, to let you know that you are not alone, um, that if you are heavy, if your heart is heavy, if you're exhausted, you're not alone and that God's grace is, is enough. And it, it is faithful. And um, I wanted to read y'all just a verse really quick that I have really been clinging to before we, we talk about our Proverbs 31 study. Um, so y'all can keep sharing kind of where you are. But I want to read you this verse that just really brought me a lot of encouragement a second ago. It is Psalm 73, 20, 28. You know what? I'm actually going to flip this around. And y'all can have with me. I never really do this. So this is in Psalm 73. And I'm going to read this verse. It says, Nevertheless... I am continually with you. You hold my right hand. You guide me with your counsel. And afterward, you will receive me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is nothing on earth that I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. And I want to encourage you, first of all, with that today. 
that whenever you're, you feel like your flesh, your strength, your heart, just so many things are failing around you, that this is the purpose. God is the strength of my heart in my portion forever. Um, after that, it actually talks about the nearness of God is our good. For him to be near, near us is our good. And he's faithful to be near us um, in the middle of the day when we're exhausted. And literally all we have to say is, Jesus, like, I need your help. I need you. I'm, I'm weary. I'm confused. I'm distracted. I'm discouraged. Just tell him. And he's so faithful to be the strength of our hearts and our portions forever. Someone asked what verse that was. Um, Psalm 73. You should read the whole Psalm. But that was specifically Psalm 73, 23 through 28. And um, I've been meditating on that passage a lot lately. Um, and today we are going to talk about Proverbs 31, 24. And um, in this specific verse, we're going to, um, we actually talked about Lydia. If you're doing the Proverbs 31 study with me, I'm going to kind of show this. Um, so here's Proverbs 31 study. Um, we write about the story of Lydia and um, how she used her passions, her gifts, her, um, she was a savvy business lady, how she used that specifically for God's glory. And, um, and I think that all of this will connect even just to how you're feeling today and where you're at in your life. And, um, as, as I was going through this just a second ago, it brought me a lot of encouragement to read. And so, um, Proverbs 31, 24 is the verse that we're going to read, but it says she makes linen garments and sells them. She delivers sashes to the merchant. Um, right now we're going through the Proverbs 31 woman verse by verse. We're just breaking this woman down. And um, we've talked about this a few periscopes ago in the very beginning that um, scholars say that this chapter most likely describes the virtues of many women. And so we can learn different characteristics of her. And the most important thing that we see over and over and over is that she is a God-fearer. She's a God-fearer. Um, she sees that he is the most important thing. He is the reason that we live and move and breathe. And so literally her fear of the Lord motivates her to do anything and everything. And, um, and we're going to, we see that in her home. We see that, um, in, in her business and the things that she did, we see this in every aspect of her life. We see it in her marriage. We see it in the ways that she acts with the people that are around her every day. Um, and so we see that because she is a God fearer, that literally motivates everything that she does. And, um, whenever I was, whenever I was writing this study, my mom went through it with me. She's on this periscope right now. Um, we talked a lot about how this woman, she wasn't the perfect woman because we know from scripture that no one is perfect apart from Jesus Christ. Um, that literally his blood has washed her. She is righteously redeemed, redeemed because of the blood of the lamb. That is, that is us. We have been set free from the chains and the bondage of sin. Um, and we have been given a new life, a new purpose in Christ alone. And so she wasn't this perfect woman. No, she was a woman who feared the Lord, the God who is perfect. And Instead of chasing after perfect, she chased the Lord. Um, yes, we are being perfected through his blood, that he is literally sanctifying us and making us new. He's giving us um, new passions. And and the reason I wanted to ask y'all that question at the very beginning, how you're doing today, um, is because of that work that he is still doing within us right now. Literally, that he's doing in our hearts, in this season of life, that God is, um, he's moving and he's taking our brokenness. He's taking our weariness. He's taking um, the bad days, the hard days. He's taking all of these things and he can redeem them and use them for his glory. And um, when we read about Lydia's story um, in Acts, I'm going to just look at my notes real quick. Acts 16, 11 through 15. So you can, you can look that up later. Um, Acts 16, 11 through 15. I'm not going to read it all right now because I've got limited time. Um, but we, we learned about Lydia that she was a seller of purple goods and it describes her as a worshiper of God. And um, in this specific account, in, in the book of Acts, we're reading about the formation of the church and how the gospel just began to spread um, just like wildfire across the people. And Lydia actually was a very important part of the church. And, um, and it literally describes her that she used her, her gifts, she used her business, she used the things that God had given her to bring God glory. And she used that to be a part of the church. Um, and, and to help even fund the church. She used the, the ways that God had, um, had provided for her. 
And um, it's such a blessing, just I think to even know that. Because for me, right now in this season of life, I'm a mom and I have a, a business too, um, a business and a ministry. And um, no matter what you do, there is something that God has gifted you with, something he has passionate, uh, made you passionate about, something that he has literally put in your, in your hands to do for his glory. And um, it may look like business. It may look like raising six kids. Um, it may look like being a student. And there's so many different ways. But literally, I see somebody says that they're a crocheter right there. I mean, I cannot crochet. And um, one thing that I actually wanted to point out to you is um, I feel like we get so confused about the will of God at times. Um, we we go, I don't know what to do. I actually lead a group of college girls in my church. And so often I get the question, what am I supposed to do with my life? I don't know what I'm supposed to major in. I don't know what job I'm supposed to get. Um, and so often I've even asked that, God, what am I supposed to do? And he makes it clear to us. He made us all very unique with different passions, different giftings, different um we live in different places. We have different families. Literally, God has uniquely made us and uniquely placed us in a specific place to bring glory to him and to use all that we have strategically for the gospel and, um, and to tell others about him. And I wrote down um, this in the study. Whatever your business, your employment, or your routine, your daily routine looks like, God has a unique purpose for your influence. To be a God-fearer as a stay-at-home mom, a full-time working woman, or a college student overflows into your everyday actions. And so um, this is literally all women, all seasons of life, wherever you are. Um, Lydia listened to the gospel and was forever changed. You too can be radically made new by the good news of Jesus Christ. If your heart has become numb to the glorious grace of God, reread the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus in Luke 22 through 24 and ask him to remind you of the magnificence of the gospel. And um, I just love that because the gospel literally should be the motivation, the thing that propels us to live and move and breathe and do everything um, that God has called us to do for his glory. And so God's will is actually not so mysterious. He literally tells us to do everything to the glory of God, um, to fear the Lord, to trust in him, to bring all of our worries and petitions and all of these things that are heavy on our hearts to him and to receive his grace and his peace. Um, he tells us to go and tell the good news to all nations. Um, he tells us to be faithful in the little things. Um, he tells us to, to go and to preach, um, to preach the gospel. He tells us to, to pray at all times. He tells us to seek first the kingdom of God. I mean, this is the will of God. So right where you are, um, that's about the Proverbs 31 woman. She's faithful right where she is to do the work of God, to use the things that he has given her to bring him glory. And so, um, even today, if you are, exhausted, if you are weary, um, if you're confused, if you're discouraged, I just don't know where you are, but wherever your heart is, come to the Lord and say, God, this is where I am. Um, this is where, where you have me. These are the things on my heart. I'm going to trade my, my frustrations for your peace. Um, I'm going to trade my confusion for your direction. I'm going to be faithful to fear you above all else. I'm going to be faithful in the tiniest things that nobody's ever going to see because we live in a world that, um, that glorifies the things that people can see. Um, we glorify numbers and, um, me and my husband were joking the other day. Uh, I was taking a picture of my son on the swing and we, we were just joking because we feel like if you don't take a picture of something these days, people don't believe you that it actually happened <laughs> because we document everything. And, um, in a way it seems like we rate everything, um, by likes and numbers and all of these things. And it can trap us as women and it can make us feel like the things that we're doing, the little things don't matter as much as the big things. Um, but that's totally not the truth. God calls us to be faithful in the little teeny tiny things that nobody is going to see. Um, and those are the really humbling things. But those are the places where we we know him intimately, where we become more like him. And um, and where he just, he, he molds us and he shapes us for the big things. But it all starts with little tiny things. Lydia um, didn't just do these big things. She was faithful in the little things. And the Proverbs 31 woman, we, we read about her. We've already read, I'm going to, look at my Bible real quick, but we've already read different things about her that she was so faithful in, um, in the little things. And, um, let me pull this up really quick. Okay. So, um, 
we just read how she literally even spun yarn. Like, like who wants to spin yarn? Um, and yet she did that for God's glory. She did that because she feared him and she trusted him and she wanted to live a life that, that, that matters for the kingdom. And so I just want to encourage you with that today. Um, I want to encourage you that it's so encourage or it's so easy for us to get lost um, in comparison and and a few things I wrote down in competing, comparing, and trying to be the best. Um, even just Proverbs thirty one women, we try to be the best. I mean, we try to go okay. I you know I've got to post a picture of this because it's going to make me look so like I love Jesus. I don't know. Um, but we do these things in our hearts. And the thing that matters that God looks is he looks at our hearts. He looks at these little tiny faithful things that we can do to, to be worshipful. So my encouragement to you is, um, in being faithful in little things is not to compete, not to compare, um, not to strive, not to do these things for numbers, not to post things for likes, not to, um, share things for affirmation, but to do everything that you do for the glory of God and because you fear him and that that would be what fuels us and what motivates us. Um, and so that's, that's kind of what I wanted to share today from, from the study and, um, just what God was teaching me in my own weariness. And, um, and I just, I noticed that whenever I look too much to other people and, um, to just the worldly things and to the numbers and all of that stuff that I just lose my joy. I so quickly lose my focus. And, and the reason that God um, has me living and moving and breathing, I lose that focus whenever I try to compete or compare or um, be the best. And God hasn't called me to do any of those things. He's literally called me to be faithful right where I am with what I have. And, um, and that's it. And to love Jesus with that. And so, um, so God just, he had me do a heart check earlier. And um, I think that that's kind of what this periscope is today. It's just a heart check for us. Um, it's a heart check. It's a reminder. And I pray it's just something that will help compel us again to, to just be motivated to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And that that would be the reason we do everything. Um, and so I just want to encourage you with that today. And I want to pray over us real quick. And then I'm going to go in and, um, and spend time with my in-laws. Because they're in there taking care of my little Noli bear who y'all have... Um, scene and he's so cute. Y'all, I can't even stand it. But, um, I just want to pray for us and that, that God would, that we would be willing to be humbled by him. And it's so hard. Like the, the hum, the humility and the soul scrubs and all of those things are so hard, but guys, they're so necessary. And God is so good whenever he scrubs us to make us more like him. Um, he's so good to use our small gifts and, um, and our little things to just bring him glory. And he's so good to sing over us and to be always with us. So, um, I just want to pray for us really quick. I think somebody's pulling in next door, but I'm going to pray for us right now. Um, God, I thank you so much for these ladies that are just joining in with me today. Whenever I'm, my soul feels weary. Um, and Lord, I just know that, that today I got distracted from my purpose but God, you're so gracious and you're so faithful to meet us whenever we're weary and confused and broken and discouraged. God, you're so faithful to use our little tiny gifts, our small offerings for your glory. You're so faithful to, to love us and to sing over us. God, you're so faithful to send Jesus to die for us so that we can have new life. And not only that, but to sanctify us every day. You are so faithful and I pray that we would never forget that, but that we would be women who fear you. God, that we would do everything for your glory, not for the praise of man. Lord, not for numbers, not for um, any of these things, but Lord, just for your glory. I pray this in Jesus' powerful, mighty, perfect, wonderful, amazing name. Amen. All right, guys. Um, that's what I wanted to share today. Uh, tomorrow, I, I hope to be on um, Periscope and... Um, yeah, I just saw, I just saw my mom said, somebody said their lupus is flared up today. Um, anytime, if y'all have got something heavy on your heart, um, share it here. Know that like that I will pray for you and the other women will pray for you. And so, um, I even hope that this can, the Periscope is kind of a weird place, but God is using it. And, um, and so I know it's, it's not exactly the, you know, the same as us being right in front of each other, but I literally want this to be a community that we can pray for each other. So, um, if somebody has a prayer, I saw somebody lost a family member, um, that, that we would be faithful to each other to literally like get off the phone and pray for each other. And so, um, I just, I love that. God is so good in that. 
But, um, so tomorrow I I'm hoping to do a Periscope. I don't really know what our plans are. But, um, if not, you know what? T next week is another week. And, um, this week has just been pretty crazy. So thank y'all. Um, I see you've got elderly parents who, um, Alzheimer's. Yes, my, my papa had Alzheimer's. Someone asked, how was the zoo? You know what? I'm just going to tell y'all some two, two things and then I'm going to get off. First of all, um, the zoo was hilarious because like none of the animals were out. So we, we saw a bunch of empty cages, but it was still good. So that was funny. Um, the second thing, me and my, my phone's about to die. Me and my husband actually went last night to see this crazy thing called the sandhill cranes. And literally it's 300,000 birds that migrate to Nebraska. And, um, and they all come to this, to the Platte river and y'all, we watched these 300,000 birds like flying and squawking and it was the most amazing thing in the world. And I think I'm going to post a video. I might post a picture tonight on Life Flow Beautifully. Um, but I think I'm going to post some videos in the coming days because it was awe inspiring and completely amazing. Um, so, and I think somebody said something about a Facebook group. I'm also going to be really honest about this. I started a Facebook group <laughs> last year and I did not keep up with it. So if any of y'all are in that Facebook group, um, y'all can testify. I kept up with it for like three months. So if we do a Facebook group eventually, um, I may get somebody to help me to, um, to keep up with it, to, to do that well. Um, because I don't, I know that a lot of times I, I have great intentions and I want to start so many things. And then God just says, okay, slow down and just be faithful. So, um, the Facebook group may, if somebody wants to help me with that, let me know. But, um, right now we probably won't do that. But maybe, maybe eventually if we can do it really well. I just want to do something like that really well. Um, so I see there's so many prayer requests coming up. And um, I, I love seeing that. And I'm actually going to go back through after this and, and read through them. Um, you can do the comments really easily on catch.me slash lobeautifully. And you can go back and read through the comments and um, find each other. But my phone is literally about to die. So I think we're going to just like, it's going to cut off in a second. Um, I hope to see you all tomorrow if I don't. Monday. We will be, I'm going to be back on Monday because I will be home and kind of back in the, um, the regular routine. Maybe you could do prayer coffee periscopes. I love that. Um, that we were doing the coffee chats before we started the proverb study, but I have not, um, done them since I've been doing, doing that. So once we finish the proverb study, we'll go back to doing our life, beautifully coffee chats and just talk about real things like real life stuff. Um, raw, real, and, um, just us seeking Jesus together. And I love that idea that we could do some prayer periscopes. I mean, that's, that's awesome. So, um, mama, I will give Noli Bear a hug. You know, I'll give him a kiss for all of y'all because he's so precious. Um, and I will talk to y'all, uh, probably tomorrow, but check, check Instagram to see, um, just kind of what's going on. I will talk to you later. Thank you again for joining me. So blessed by you and encouraged by you. Um, I'll see y'all tomorrow. Bye.